Hello, I'm Rida Fakhri. Welcome to We the People. Americans claim to have a pride in their country and political system that sets them apart from citizens of many other nations. In the 1800s, the French visitor Alexis de Tocqueville coined the term exceptional to describe characteristics and values, liberty, egalitarianism, individualism, that distinguish Americans from other peoples. Now today, exceptionalism also refers to the belief that the United States has a special mission and responsibility for humanity. Both Barack Obama and John McCain have tried to tap into that belief whose origins lie with Puritan pilgrims, America's first settlers. We the People travels to Plymouth Plantation, a recreation of the pilgrims' first settlement in Plymouth, Massachusetts, to explore the impact of exceptionalism on the 2008 presidential race. Good morrow. You are welcome to our town. I'm William Brewster, elder of the church here in New Plymouth. I come here seven years ago on that ship called Mayflower. Our church had some troubles in England. Lived in the Dutch city of Leiden for about a dozen years. Come here and it's been a bit of a trial, but we're getting on much better now. To see it from the ocean, just the wilderness, it was very frightening. Half of my neighbors did die that first winter here. We got through that period by knowing that God was, his providence was there and by prayer. We do see many similarities uh, in our trials coming into this wild place uh, and the children of Israel uh, struggling as they did for 40 years in the wilderness. Plymouth Plantation is a living history museum. I'm John Kemp, Associate Director of Colonial Interpretation. Here at Plymouth Plantation, we take on the roles and try to express the views of the people we know actually lived here at Plymouth uh, in the colony in the 1620s. I know that I do the Lord's work in this country, in a place where it really has never been tended before. Uh, our church is a people that have been touched by a godly zeal for that reformation that the Lord hath begun some hundred years past. We would understand ourselves to be of that great new Israel of God that is coming out of these reforms. They believed that they were setting up a community that was not just to give themselves a proper way of living with their God, but also as a beacon to other people. Well, my name is Jim Baker. I've spent most of my professional career as a historian of the Pilgrims and Plymouth Colony. Americans since the colonial times have felt that they had an unusual role, an important role, not only in their own history, but in the history of the whole planet. And if one is looking for where this concept of exceptionalism actually began, um, it is very good to look at Plymouth, because what happened here as Governor Winthrop in Massachusetts would later say it was a city on a hill that all would look to, that they were the people who would lead the other peoples of the earth from darkness into light. This church is the direct heir of the Pilgrim Covenant made in England and carried from Holland to here. I'm Reverend Gary Marks. I'm the pastor of the Church of the Pilgrimage here in Plymouth, Massachusetts. In the Bible, there is uh, an image which has been drawn upon by a number of uh, politicians. A city set upon a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. But I have been guided by the standard. John Winthrop set before his shipmates 331 years ago. We must always consider, he said, that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us. At the time of the American Revolution, the pilgrims were sort of removed from their actual history and elevated to almost a divine status and given the credit for the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and all these other documents that underwrote American exceptionalism. And suddenly the city on the hill is not just the Calvinist salvation, it is all of the American values and virtues as well. I've spoken of a shining city all my political life, but I don't know if I ever quite communicated what I saw when I said it. But in my mind, it was a tall, proud city built on rocks stronger than oceans, windswept, God-blessed, and teeming with people of all kinds living in harmony and peace. I think that people today want to return to some sense of what makes America exceptional. Why is America what it is? For when we have faced down impossible odds,
When we've been told we're not ready, or that we shouldn't try, or that we can't, generations of Americans have responded with a simple creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Both campaigns want to hone in on that, how America has been great. Fight with me. Fight with me. Nothing is inevitable here. We're Americans. We never hide from history. We make history. Political campaigns try to tap into that we're on the way somewhere to become, again, that city set up on a hill or that example for the world. In our culture today, I think that has become, in many ways, secularized. But modern evangelicals and Christians have never varied or budged from that original vision. I welcome you here to the National Monument of the Forefathers that weaves together the values and the beliefs of the pilgrims from the Bible and history my name is Dr. Paul Jelly. I'm an historian with the Plymouth Rock Foundation, as well as a senior pastor of the New Testament Church here in Plymouth, Massachusetts. If you look up at Faith, she's pointing directly to heaven with the finger one there. Every symbol on Faith tells you what made a pilgrim a pilgrim. They believe there was one mediator between God the Father and, uh, uh, and humanity, and that was Jesus Christ. She's carrying the Geneva edition of the Bible. It means the pilgrim believed every answer and every solution to life was found in the Bible. They had religious liberty. They had economic liberty. They had civil liberty. I think that many evangelical Christians think that America was kind of a, a rock thrown from heaven, as you will, and it becomes an object of devotion for them, the nation itself. The notion of a chosen people is very, very real to them. Uh, and America has a divine role to play in the world. This is William Bradford writing in Of Plymouth Plantation about the year 1630. Thus, out of small beginnings, greater things have been done by his hand, and as one small candle may light a thousand, so the light here kindled has shown unto many, yea, in some sort, to our whole nation, let the glorious name of Jehovah have all the praise. This depicts, in a sense, the pilgrim idea that America was exceptional. America had this unique, exceptional destiny to somehow influence other nations by being an example of something. Never by simply dominating, but being an example. The first settlers thought that because we were not Christians, that they could come here and take dominion, take our land, that they had control over us. I'm Linda Coombs. I'm the Associate Director of the Wampanoag Indigenous Program here at Plymouth Plantation. We also uh, show the lifestyle of the indigenous Wampanoag people who were here at the time. When the English settled here in 1620, they settled in what they called Plymouth, but that was the Wampanoag village of Patuxet originally. Patuxet was one of many villages that had been virtually wiped out by a plague that struck the area between 1616 and 1618. They saw that as God's providence, them being God's chosen people, God clearing the land of other human beings, you know, for them to come and settle here. I don't think the natives fit into the vision of the city on the hill at all. It's interesting that a, a people who were fleeing a country because of religious persecution came here and did the same to the people that were here. We had our own religion, we had our own beliefs. We're taking a boat trip to Clark's Island. And this is where the pilgrims held their first church service. And that's why the rock out here is called Pulpit Rock. And it was the preaching from the pulpit of the pilgrims that we recognize free election and suffrage came. And so the fact that this rock has been named Election Rock and Pulpit Rock is amazing. Lord, we pray now that we may emulate the, the, the spirit of the pilgrims and the faith that they had in our own lives. So let's lead them in Psalm 100. Serve ye Jehovah with gladness. Serve ye Jehovah with gladness. His gates and courtyards with the praising. Americans are among uh, the most religious uh, people in advanced nations. In fact, probably the United States is the leading religious rich country in the world. I'm Andy Cohut. I'm the president of the Pew Research Center. We are a fact tank. We do public opinion studies. I'm also the director of the Pew Global Attitudes Project since 2002. We've conducted 
nearly 160,000 interviews in 60 countries. You don't see much of a connection between religious beliefs and how people feel about specific foreign policies here. When you ask people about what influences their, their opinions, religiosity has a lot to do with how Americans feel about abortion or homosexuality or any one of the moral issues, but very little to do with foreign policy. There's one important exception to this, and that is among Christian conservatives, uh, there is a strong religious belief that's correlated with support for Israel. But other than that, evangelical Protestants here uh, generally resemble uh, other Americans in their broad views about foreign policy. I believe that America, based on its roots and its foundation, especially its faith, its faith has always historically been rooted on promoting Christianity by peace, not by force. Defending uh, our rights, yes. When attacked, to fight back, no question. What was once a agreed upon need to spread Christianity has now become an agreed upon need to spread a secular faith, and that's a faith in democracy. Mm -hmm.